Okay, so now we have this an alloy. For example, copper zinc matrix copper solute. Let's say zinc or B atom. Okay, typically if it's not pure, there would be some difference between A and B between copper and zinc. There must be some difference, and as a result, they would have different quite often slight difference in size. There may be some difference in the so-called electronegativity or valence state, right? There may also be difference in melting point. Copper has higher melting point than zinc. Zinc typically melts at 400 degrees C, copper at 1000 degrees C. Okay? Because of this, naturally you would think there must be some difference in the so-called diffusion quote unquote diffusion rate. Or diffusion coefficient. Make sense? It's just they are different. So it's it's not like a atom A and the radioactive tracer A. They are the pretty much the same. But here, because their valence, their size, their electronegativity, melting point, the bonding nature, there must be some difference. Okay? So we said okay, one A rich, the other one B rich, A goes let's say single phase region for simplicity downhill diffusion a goes towards right side b goes towards left side okay the atom now first let's think of the so-called atom flux the flow of atom per area with respect to pay attention to what i write here a lattice plane a lattice plane means what Okay, let's for simplicity assume we can we are dealing with a single crystal. And for single crystal that will be depending on how you view it, that will be lattice plane, right? That will be lattice plane. Let's say okay, suppose you can sit onto those one of those in, low index lattice plane and observe. Of course this is only a mental e experiment. Suppose you sit on either one 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 or one zero zero plane, sits there and the atoms are some on your left side, some on your right side. And the atoms would move in what way? Random, right? The atoms would vibrate, and I'm here, vibrate. Uh, I'm, I'm here, sit on this plane. And then atoms would vibrate, and they would move. Okay? So, let's consider the diffusion flux of A and B, both A and B, with respect to your chosen lattice plane. You sit here with respect to that chosen lattice plane. And I put that a bracket, a so-called moving coordinate. We'll talk about it later because what people learn is when this thing happens, you that specific lattice plane you choose is actually going to like a on a bus. It's like uh, you sit in a bus and you s s observe the passengers in the bus move towards e each other. Well, at the same time, your bus is maybe moving. So that's what I can say. Okay, you sit on that lattice plane, your lattice plane may be moving. It, it's a moving coordinate. Okay, you see what I mean? Okay. And uh, if you sit on that lattice plane, all these atoms on your left and on your right, they are moving in a so-called Brownian motion. They are randomly moves, vibrate and randomly moves in nature. Okay? And fixed first law. What is fixed first law? J equals minus D times concentration gradient. D would be our diffusion coefficient partial differential concentration with respect to location. Here I chose, pay attention, I choose x bar, not, not sorry, x prime, not x, because I'm dealing with looking everything from my lattice plane point of view. I'm sitting in that uh, long bars, two sides, like you remember those bars that have two link together, and that bus may be moving, and you sit at the junction between the two sections, the passengers, you are observing how passengers move. Okay, so J prime would be the flux of A atoms over, well, over your chosen, your chosen lattice plane, 
is due to the diffusion coefficient times concentration gradient. Concentration gradient with respect to your moving coordinate within that bus. Okay. Similarly, you can write the same equation for B, right? A atom, let's say boy on one side, girls on the other side. Observe. You can write these two equations. And uh, what we're going to say, JA prime and JB prime, they are the flux. Flux of what? A for A atom, B for B atom. But we put prime to indicate they are flux with respect to a given lattice plane that may move by itself. Make sense? You think, okay, on that bus, you sit at the in the middle, that bus hole may be moving. And you are observing how the boys on one side and the girls on the other side mingle together. You can still count, right? If you sit on that bus in that location, even though your bus is moving, you can still count how many boys go this side, how many girls go on the other side. You are with respect to your bus within that bus. That's just a, this analogy. And then DA and DB are defined so-called partial diffusion coefficient or intrinsic diffusion coefficient. I put intrinsic here means that's totally due to the thermal vibration, randomly brown in motion. You're sitting on that bus, random motion on both sides. Okay? This part. Now let's say we have brass on one side, copper on the other side. Zinc goes one way, copper goes the other way. And uh, we said, uh, okay, Let's assume, with respect to my moving in my interface, J, zinc, is greater than copper. That which means the, cop the amount of zinc atom flows from the left to the right is greater than the amount of copper flows the other way. What if the interface does not move? What would happen? If this interface between these two parts does not move, but I have more zinc going out than the copper coming back, what would happen to the brass side? I would have, as I change the color, if the interface doesn't move, I would have so-called excess vacancy. Well, on this side, because I have more atoms coming out than atoms coming in, I would have excess vacancy form within the brass, within the zinc rich side. Okay? I would have a lot of vacancy accumulated here. But if the temperature is high enough, what is going to happen? Will that vacancy sit still? No. And actually, what we learned from before, vacancy actually diffuse way faster than the self-diffusion or radioactive tracer. If there's actual vacancy, any actual vacancy, that vacancy would quickly go away, diffuse to the section that is lower vacancy concentration. The vacancy will diffuse from brass to copper following also fixed law. Make sense? If, I, if this interface doesn't move, I'm going to leave a lot of vacancy, but quickly that vacancy has to go somewhere else. Make sense? As a result, if the vacancy moves towards the right side, a lot of the side moves towards the right side, this would lead to the so-called motion of the interface. I have a lot of vacancy, the vacancy moves, this interface has to actually move towards the left. I'll put it another way, the copper goes, it leaves the vacancy, if this doesn't change, the vacancy moves, or the vacancy collapses, the interface is going to move back. Do you see the point? If the vacancy goes toward our vacancy collapse, it's essentially this interface have to move back, move backward. Okay, so now it goes to the derivation part. Assuming the total number of atoms per unit volume 
which we call the um, number density. The num total number of atoms per unit volume is constant for simplicity. The total number of atoms is the total number of we are dealing with binary, which means the C0, total number of atoms per unit volume is the, the number of atom A per unit volume plus the number of atom B per unit volume. That gives my total because we are dealing with a binary system. Make sense? Okay. And then we would have so-called uh, this relationship. Do you see that? The concentration gradient of C with respect to my moving coordinate. C A is minus is C zero minus C B, right? C A is C zero minus C B from here. And the C zero is what we assume is to be constant. So do you see now we are going to have a negative sign of partial differential of C B versus X prime. Do you see that? From here to here. Because C and C A and C B plus together become a constant number. Make sense? Okay, so that's what we have. Now let's look at uh, our atom at a kind of microscopic scale. Randomly, let's say these are our atoms. I label the so called uh, atom 1 through eight, 9, that's our so called different atom planes right i label the atom planes and the atoms would be moving randomly towards the whatever the neighboring vacancy some goes up some goes right of course may some goes left but i'm just labeling whatever goes up goes down goes right make sense these are the microscopic kind of schematic i'm labeling one through nine would be what our different uh, lattice plane. And I choose one lattice plane, number five, as my what? So called marker. Suppose I can sit on there, that uh, plane as chosen as my marker. Atoms are moving, some of them going up, going down, some of them going towards the right. Let's say, okay, after one, some motion, we become this. Do you see that? This guy moves towards up. This guy moves towards right, there's some change. Okay. And because from here to here, because this one moves towards the right, uh, you see this kind of vacant, uh, a connected vacancy seems to be get more, maybe. Make sense? And this is my marker. And let's do this uh, further. It is not, not very good uh, animation, but uh, let's say we got, end up with something like this. Continue. The vacancy. The atoms move as a result, the vacancy. Do you see that? Okay. This would be so called the lattice plane that is got uh, eaten away. If all of the vacancy connected through here, in towards the end, this number three plane would be gone, right? If all the vacancy lined up in this number three plane, that plane is gone, which means. At the same time, there may be atom plane created on the other side. Okay? And the, again, this is our marker. Our marker initially at the number 5, but if all the vacancy lined up here, our marker essentially, if I'm going to count, the number 3 plane is gone. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm moving towards the left. Do you see that? Okay. So now let's consider this. The atoms, the brown in motion, the atoms will move. J A atoms, let's assume atoms goes towards right. Make sense? Atoms towards makes towards right, which means that I would have a so called equivalency. Vacancy goes towards the left. A goes right. The resulting vacancy is going towards left right vacancy goes right and goes left and because of that vacancy goes towards left and uh, when they collapse when the vacancy combine together they I'm, I'm losing something 
So as a result, they would create a so-called um, movement of my marker lattice plane. All the vacancies come here, and when the vacancy all goes to here, I'm losing one plane. The marker essentially moves backward a little bit. Make sense? Okay. And then the collective, so called, uh, if the marker moves towards the left, it's an interesting concept. The marker, this plane moves towards the left. That will be a equivalency of what? I write it down here. It needs some time to digest. If my marker plane moves towards the left, it's as if all the items to the right are moving to the left a little bit. This is a kind of a tricky part to understand. Okay, items A going towards right. Because of that, that will be equivalent to vacancy comes towards left. And because of that, vacancy comes towards left. Some of the vacancy, when they collapse together, when they combine together, I'm eliminating certain plane, which means my marker relatively would move also left. And because of my marker moves left, that's essentially another way to say it's all these items and see if they move towards left a little bit. J A double prime. All the atoms, the collective, they would have a so-called collective motion of atoms A. It's actually towards left a little bit. These are the kind of concepts.